A strong financial performance, but there was very little jubilation in the NatWest boardroom this morning. A de-banking scandal involving its subsidiary Coots and Nigel Farage has already felled two senior figures. Could the chairman, Howard Davies, be next? My intention is to continue to lead the board and ensure that the bank remains sound, stable and able to support our 19 million customers. The last few weeks have been a painful period for the bank and we apologise for the uncertainty created for customers and shareholders during that period. Davies was compromised by his early decision to stand by Dame Alison Rose, the former chief executive of NatWest. She breached client confidentiality by discussing Nigel Farage's account details with the BBC after he was dropped as a customer by Coots Bank. It took away from what should have been a good day for the bank. NatWest posted profits of 3.6 billion in the first six months of the year. That was up 37% from 2.6 billion during the same period last year. But it was not enough to restore confidence among investors. The share price plummeted in the aftermath of Dame Alison Rose's resignation. It partially recovered on the back of the latest results. Howard Davies is due to retire next summer anyway, which should take some of the pressure off him. But there are still questions over whether he can provide the stability and order the bank needs to get through this. Then again, the leadership turmoil has already had a material impact on the company's share price. Do shareholders really have the appetite for more resignations? Conservative MPs seem to think that it may not be necessary. Well, my understanding is that Sir Howard Davies is coming to the end of his tenure. Um, clearly, a succession process is underway. And uh, in due course, there will be a new chair at uh, NatWest uh, in terms of the board. And um, there's an in independent investigation that they've commissioned uh, to find out exactly what went wrong here. Beyond Farage, many others have come forward, including the campaigner Gina Miller, who says she had her account with Monzo dropped without explanation. They've said it's because we're a political party, which highlights a much bigger problem. This is not just about Monzo. This is about the entire banking sector deciding that new political voices and new political parties cannot access banking facilities or wider financial services products, which to me says that we have a dysfunctional um, democracy. Despite Ms Miller's protestations, Monzo maintains that it does not offer services to any political parties but a root and branch review of the entire sector may force banks to loosen their stance. Gurpreet Nawan, Sky News.